Hi everyone. I want to take some time and talk a little bit about voter fraud, voter integrity, and some of the things that the left keeps trying to claim is making it harder to vote in the wake of an election that I anticipate is going to have one of the highest rates of voter fraud in any midterm that we have recorded history on. Now, with the Kavanaugh hearings going on and all of the dirty tricks that are coming out from the end of the Kavanaugh hearings, which seem to revolve around delay, 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 like I keep talking about, it's easy to see why this is probably going to be one of the most contested midterms that ever was and probably ever will be. I mean, at this point, we're sitting here just pretty much talking about a complete Boy Scout, and the left was able to come back and dig something up on him from 35 years ago that's now changed the idea of the entire situation of something that would have been a very easy confirmation in any other situation. This is something that I told the right that they should have done as soon as they got the pick in that they should have held the vote on it. But... I am glad that they followed procedure and didn't try to do something through a back room. That is one of the things that I'm glad about with this Congress and government as it stands right now. Now this whole thing for me started one day when I was posting on an online message board where one person pointed out that he didn't care about the Sargon and Medicare view that was going on at the time and I was kind of in the same boat with him. I really didn't care about it. but. It led me to bring something up that was very important. I said that most of the people that were in the message board were sitting here discussing whether or not they were on Team Sargon or Team Jim, and we're sitting here in the United States, far away from England, looking at one of the most contested elections probably of our lifetimes that is going to be subject to more voter fraud than I think we've ever seen. I jumped out and I went to a different online message board and started talking about the idea of election integrity with a couple of other users there and I started to tell a story from when I was much much younger and it really got me thinking about how easy voter fraud really is. I know most of the people on the right put the tinfoil on right away and say that there are such districts that have over 100% voter turnout and the statistical impossibility of other districts going 100% for Obama with zero votes for his opponent Romney at the time. And there are other right-leaning tinfoil stories about voter fraud. But on the left of it, those people will come back out and say that there's only been one or two ever convicted cases of voter fraud, so it must never be happening. Frankly, I'm a little bit in the middle. I accept the fact that there's voter fraud happening rife around the country. Some of it's not getting caught, and some of it's getting completely overlooked for the sake of tilting an election in one direction or another. But I don't think it's a completely vast conspiracy the way that a lot of the people on the right make it out to be. The first thing that I want to do is bring up some of the debates that come up with each election as they go forward and kind of give my side on each one of them and then I want to finish this by sharing an anecdote from when I was younger in which I really start to think about the voter integrity and what we need to do to make it better and some of the things that my state has already done to make it better. The first thing we need to understand is the fact that the states decide how to regulate their voting systems. That's not a federal mandate, even for federal elections. The states conduct their elections as they see fit and then turn the results over to the federal government for verification. This has always been as long as we've been a country. It's on the states to figure out how they want to count the votes and how they want to make the rules for votes. So any proposal to make a vast national law for voting, voter registration, voter ID, or any of the other big topics that are going on should not even be argued. Go and talk to your state legislature or your local legislature and get the changes made that you want to see changed or at least make the petition so the people out there know that you're interested. First thing I want to talk about is voter ID. I am for voter ID. I have seen a flawless system in my state. 
I've never seen any problem with voter ID and I've actually offered to drive people to the DMV to get the free ID that they need to go out to the polls and vote. Even though their driver's licenses function as a voter ID and many of the people that the left say are going to be affected by voter ID do have driver's licenses. Your voter ID is one of the easiest ways to regulate elections and make sure that you're voting in the right district. I'm not even going to talk about multiple districts right now because that's going to come in my little anecdote later on. But that's one of the easiest ways for election officials to make sure that you're in the right district and that you're getting the right ballot so that you can vote for the people that affect you. Now, this isn't really big for the federal level, for the president and senators in your state you're going to get the same ballot no matter what but depending on where you live your city alderman your sheriff your county officials and many of your other local officials change depending on where you are where you live and where you're registered and with same-day registration it's very easy to fall into the wrong polling place so a pollster can just look at your ID look at your address on your ID and say hey you're in the right place or no you've got to go to this place down the road because that's where your district is a lot of the opponents to voter ID think that it's racially charged and I don't understand that at all I think that's just a talking point to prevent it from happening to be completely honest if you do not have a driver's license or a state-issued ID, every state that has enacted voter ID offers a low-cost or free ID that you can use to vote that has your state-registered address on it for ease and convenience. In urban areas, which is what the law says is going to be affected, mass transit almost always goes to the DMV. In some places you might have to jump on and get on two or three buses to do it. But you can get to the DMV to get your documentation. It's not difficult. And there are people out there who are proponents of voter ID. Left and right who sit out there and say, yes, I will drive you to the DMV if you can't get there on mass transit for whatever reason. We'll get in the car and we'll make sure that you can participate. We just want to make sure that you're participating the right way and the legal way. So many other activities in this country require an ID, so it's not hard to think that you would have one. Therefore, I think voter ID should just go through no matter what. I think everybody should be petitioning their state legislators to go through and vote for voter ID and put it on the books. I understand there are states out there that are never going to do it no matter how many people petition, but I think everybody should be out there petitioning for this. The next topic I want to bring up is same-day voter registration, and I am actually a proponent of this, even though a lot of people on the right are not. In this country, people are moving all of the time. This is one of the most fluid countries out there. People move for work, people move because their lifestyle changes, people move because they want to get out of their parents' house, people move for all kinds of reasons throughout this country. And sometimes they move right before an election. I actually moved right before the primaries for my state and district. And because of which, because I couldn't get over to the DMV and get my ID changed. I actually did have to waive my ability to vote in the primaries. I've already had that taken care of, and I surely plan to vote in the general election, but at the time there was no way that I could legally vote in the primaries. However, I will be required to register where I live now in order to vote, and I can go and do that on the same day. Now I'm going to reference a story again that I haven't told yet, but the anecdote that I'm going to tell at the end of this video will sum up how I feel about same-day voter registration, especially when it's coupled with voter ID, versus when it's in a completely unrestricted state and people are just going out and voting and registering same-day willy-nilly. But for the most part, especially in the state that I'm in that has voter ID, I am absolutely a proponent of same-day registration. That is the easiest way to get the most people participating in a representative democracy and the best way to get the most people choosing who represents them in the country. Purging of old voter rolls is the next topic that I want to bring up. 
The purging of old voter rolls is a very hotly contested topic almost every single time there's an election, and there are people that are screaming to the high heavens to stop it from happening. If you purge your voter rolls, then people have to go back and register again, and it's going to keep people from being able to vote. I am so much of an opponent of the idea of keeping the old voter rolls that I'm going to come out and say that the arguments that the people have against purging old voter rolls is complete, 100% utter bullshit. I am not only such a proponent of states, municipalities, and voting districts going out and purging voter rolls for the old rolls from years and years ago, where there's still certain people on there, dead or moved or otherwise, from years ago, I will go a step further, and I think that every single voting district should purge their voter rolls the day after every single election. This goes into part and why I am a proponent of same-day voter registration. As soon as your general election is over, and maybe even we should if we enact same-day voter registration, go as far as to as soon as the primary is over. But as soon as the general election is over, specifically, every single roll should be taken out and destroyed. And in two years, we go back and start from scratch again. Or however many years if your district or state votes in an off year for a particular position. Every single election, the Republicans bring up the fact that dead people vote for Democrats. And a part of that is true. And every single election, especially in a particularly blue area, you always have somebody that's going around knocking on everybody's door and just giving a friendly, friendly reminder for the person that lives there to go out and vote. However, you'll notice as you open the door and the person goes to remind you to vote that the first thing the person asks is if X still lives at the address. Now, I don't want to go too tinfoily with this, but it's a well-passed-around opinion that many of these people that are going around knocking on doors are going and looking to see who has moved so they can take that registration point and assign somebody without an ID in a non-voter ID state to go and vote in the place of the person who has moved or passed along or any other situation like that. Many of the proponents for purging of voter rolls will come out and say the same thing. It's the union going out and finding new votes that they ne don't necessarily have to put a face with. Now this last topic is one that I can issue a challenge with. The Democrats go out and say every year that no, they don't collect dead people to vote for them and they don't get people who've moved to vote for them and they don't get illegals to vote for them. And the illegals thing we can't really control. There are other ways around that, but that would involve a much more extensive video. But as far as the dead people and the people that have moved, go ahead and put your money where your mouth is. Purge out every one of those voter rolls. Get everybody off of there and start from scratch. And then tell us again that there's no voter fraud. That's my challenge out to anybody who is a proponent for keeping voter rolls the same and never changing them or purging them. Give it a try just on one election and see what happens from that election and the next few going forward. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, and you've proven me wrong. But if I'm right, we've found a new way to make a legislation in each one of our states to help protect the integrity of voting that the Democrats love to swear up and down is there and has always been there. Now, I've been promising an anecdote throughout this entire video, and it's a story of really what brought me to the point on how I feel about each one of these items and how I think that election should run to be completely integral and completely fair. And it covers two of the two topics that I talked to almost perfectly. So the year was 2004. I was just participating in my very first election ever. In 2002, I didn't consider myself informed enough to vote in a midterm, and I had just moved, and at the time, I believed that I was going to have to go and 
go up to my parents' house to vote. I couldn't find the time off work to do so. There were a bunch of other things going on in my life. And I really wasn't that politically active back then, much different from the way I've become now. So in 2004, I was a fresh-faced 20-year-old, and I was talking to my cousin. I was over at his mom's house, which is where I had been staying because I stayed in Kenosha for work. And we were talking about the fact that he was going to go out and vote. That was also going to be his first election ever, as he had just turned 18. And he and his elder brother urged me that I should go out and vote. Now, I'd been getting cell phone bills at my aunt's house, so I had a piece of utility mail at my aunt's house that showed my address on it, therefore making me eligible for that particular district. That gave the assumption to me, to my cousins, and to the pollster that that was the district that I should have been voting in. And I only voted in one district because that's what's legal, that's what you should be doing. I went out and I cast my very first vote. And I never thought anything of the process again. I thought I did the right thing, I thought I did it perfectly, and I thought that was the way that the system was just going to work. As I was telling this story to some people in the message board, I realized a lot of things about that day and what somebody who might not be as scrupulous as I am could have done in my place in the position that I was in. Now this was back before there was voter ID. So it was kind of a little bit unrestricted at the time. At the time, I was receiving mail legally in three different addresses in three different districts and it was the required utility bills there were not well not necessarily utility bills obviously because I didn't own any of the places and I didn't pay any of the utilities but it was official mail like I got my cell phone bill at my aunt's house I got some banking statements at my parents house and I you know my paychecks and anything that I was getting from work was going to the campus all three of those places were in different districts all within the state of Wisconsin and completely honestly aside from the five hour drive that it would have taken for me to get to my parents house which actually could have been easily done I did it in day trips all the time there was really nothing that was stopping me from going out and voting in all three districts we had same day voter registration and I had legal documentation that could have shown me at all three districts. All three of the topics that I discuss kind of tie into each other in a way that would make voting absolutely integral and foolproof. Purging the voter rolls only works if you can go out and same day register because otherwise it cuts off a lot of people who would otherwise not be able to register in advance in enough time to go out and get to the election and vote properly. Voter ID is something that enables same-day registration and makes it not completely foolproof, but at least a less of a slip. Now, yes, at the time it probably would have been a lot harder for me, and I think it's a lot harder for college students too. That's something that we would have to work through when you have voter ID. Many people travel a long way for college. I went five hours from home even though I stayed in the same state for college and many people go even further. Many people go out to the coasts. Many people go several states away to go to college. That is something that we would have to work through as we went through and did voter ID and registration laws and purging of voter rolls going forward. But doing all three of those steps would be a good first step and it'd be a good way to open up the debate as to what to do about this vast minority while protecting the integrity of the majority of people out there. I know a lot of people out there would say, oh, that's fine, we don't have to cater to the college students. Some of them are angry about the fact that the college students want the socialists out there, but they are 18, they haven't committed any felonies, so in my eyes they do get the chance to vote. That would be a debate that we need to have. But first and foremost, we do need to get some of these ideas out there and at least propose to the people that make our laws and regulate our elections to see 
who wants to put it through, who doesn't, and the reasons that they want to debate away as to why they don't want to put any of these things through. If you get things opened up for debate, I'm sure you'd be surprised to hear a lot of the answers out there as to why none of them should be implemented. To this day, I'll never know if I voted in the right district that day. That is between the election committee and myself. But it's been 14 years right now. I highly doubt that they're going to come back and try to do, undo an election over the fact that I might have voted in the wrong place, especially considering that, that I only voted once. What do you think about the three laws that I sat back and proposed here? And what are some other ideas that you could bring forward to help make elections fair, but also make sure that everybody can participate as we have a democracy in our country, representative or otherwise? I always welcome a thoughtful and positive discussion in the comments section below, and especially over on Twitter. That is at Ed's blog Twitter with a one in place of the I. Thanks, as always, for listening to this show and supporting this channel. And remember, never take the words of bloggers, podcasters, or journalists as gospel. Find all the facts and draw your own conclusions. Take care, everyone. You're always with me.